In this lesson, we're going to take the linear inequalities that we were working with in our last lesson and start to put them into more application-based. What we're working with is a program called linear programming. Now, I've always compared linear programming to doing a three-dimensional graph in a two-dimensional system, and that will make sense a little bit more here as we work along. First, some terms and concepts. Linear programming, quite simply, is a method of finding the minimum or maximum value of some quantity given some constraints. Next, the constraints are a set of inequalities that describe the characteristics of a situation. Now, when we provide and graph all of our constraints, it gives us a feasible region, which is a set of points on the graph that satisfy all the constraints. And as we work through a linear program, we are given an objective function. This is a function that models the quantity that is to be minimized or maximized. Now, as we work through a linear program, one thing that we have learned in mathematics over time is something called the vertex principle. And in linear programming, the vertex principle states, if there is a maximum or minimum value of the linear objective function, it occurs at one or more vertices of the feasible region. So in linear programming, what we're going to do is take a series of constraints, graph them, find the locations of intercept, and test those intersection points, the vertices, against an objective function that describes what we're trying to maximize or minimize. So let's see how this all plays in. Let's take it piece by piece. Let's check the vertices first. So here I have two different graphs and each one has an objective function. As you can see, the material has been graphed already. This is a series of greater than or equal to functions. Here we have a series of less than or equal to. Each one, we are given this function on the side. The first one, we are to find the minimum of p equals 4x plus y. On the second, we are to find the maximum of p equals x plus y. So what we're going to do is we're going to locate all the vertices, list their coordinates, and then test them against this objective function. Let's get started with our first one. Our first point, A, is located at 2, 1. Our second point, B, is located at 3, 0. And our third point, C, is located at 0, 5. And again, we are trying to find the minimum of these. So let's go with 2, 1. This would be 4 times 2 plus 1. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 gives us 9. Next, we have point B, which is 3, 0. So that will give us 4 times 3 plus 0, which is simply 12 plus 0, or 12. Last, C is our point, so we have 4 times 0 plus 5. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 5 gives us 5. Now we have final values of 9, 12, and 5, and we take these against our uh, objective function, and we want the minimum. The minimum located here is at point C, 0, 5. <clears throat> Let's try it for the second one. First, we list out our points. Point A is located at 0, 0. Point B is located at 4, 0. C can be found, looks like, at 3, 4. And D can be located at 0, 10. And again, we are trying to find the minimum, oh, sorry, the maximum value in this field. So 0, 0, we're just going adding the two values together, we get 0. 4, 0, we get 4. 3, 4, we get 7. And 0, 10, we get 10. So again, here our maximum value will be located at the point D, 0, 10. Now in both of these situations, it was coincidence that the maximum value on the y-axis 
provided us with the location that we needed. That will not always be the case. Let's take a look at a different situation where we have to build from a series of constraints. So in business, a t-shirt takes 10 minutes to make and a sweatshirt takes 20 minutes to make. If you have at most 20 hours to make shirts, the supplies for the t-shirt cost $4 and supplies for a sweatshirt cost 20 You want to spend no more than $600 on supplies and you want to have at least 50 shirts or 50 items to sell. How many t-shirts and how many sweatshirts should you make to maximize your profit? Profit for a t-shirt is $6, I mean you're selling them for 10 in total. And the profit for a sweatshirt is $20, I mean you're selling them for 40 So we have a lot of information to go over here. Let's take it out piece by piece. First, we want to maximize our profit based on this information. So our objective function is to find a maximum of uh, P equals 6T plus 20S. T is for the number of t-shirts that we produce, S is the number of sweatshirts. Now let's start pulling out other information. The first that we're going to look at is a shirt takes 10 minutes to make and a sweatshirt takes 20. So that means, and we have at most 20 hours to make shirts. So <clears throat> 10T plus 20S has to be less than or equal to, because we have at most 20 hours. Now the 10 minutes and 20 minutes are just that, they're minutes. We have to convert our 20 hours into minutes. 20 times 60 is 1,200. So our first constraint is 10t plus 20s is less than or equal to 1,200. Next, the supplies for a t-shirt are $4, supplies for a sweatshirt are 20, and we want to spend no more than $600. So that means 4t plus 20s has to be less than or equal to 600. Our third constraint, we want to have at least 50 items to sell. So that means the number of t-shirts plus the number of sweatshirts has to be greater than or equal to 50. So how many do we have to make? Well, let's take this and start graphing our items. Our first one, 10t plus 20s is less than or equal to 1200. Now if we graph as we would with any other type of standard form equation, if t is 0, that means s would maximize at 60, and our s will maximize at 120. So now we're simply going to connect these points. And now this is an inequality, so let's take a look. We want things that are below this line because we're looking at less than or equal to, so we will shade accordingly, giving us a graph that looks like this. Next, we move on to our second. 4t plus 20s has to be less than or equal to 600. So again, if t was 0, we made no t-shirts, then we could make up to 30 sweatshirts. And if we were to make no sweatshirts, then we could make up to 150 t-shirts. And we would then graph this, and again, we're going to shade below the line. And our last constraint is t plus s has to be greater than or equal to 50. So if we have no t-shirts, that's 50 sweatshirts. And if we have no sweatshirts, that's 50 t-shirts. And we're simply going to connect these. This time we're looking at above that value because we want at least 50 items to sell so we're going to shade above giving us our total feasible region. So once we have our feasible region constructed our next duty is to go through and find our points of intersection and as we look at this points of intersection on this graph are going to be the following. First we will have a point out at 50 0. Next, we will have a point at 120, 0. 
third, we will have a point at 110. And last, we will have a point at 25, 25, if our graph is accurate. So these four locations make up the vertices. Now we're going to have to check them against our objective function, p equals 6t times or plus 20s. Now as we go through and do the calculations for this, the point 50, 0 gives us a profit of $300. The point 120, 0, so if we sell 120 t-shirts and no sweatshirts, that will give us a total profit of seven hundred and twenty dollars third one hundred ten so one hundred t-shirts ten sweatshirts will give us eight hundred dollar profit and if we have the same of each twenty five t-shirts and twenty five sweatshirts this when run through our objective function gives us a profit of six hundred and fifty dollars so looking at all of the information combined, we come out with maximizing our profit by making 100 t-shirts and 10 sweatshirts. We'll use all of our time, all of our supply budget, have the number of items we want to sell, and be able to have the most money that we make. So, a lot of things going on here, combine a lot of ideas, make sure you review this and have them down ready to use.